You're watching the new Stack Makers, a podcast for people who develop, deploy, and manage at scale software. For more information and articles about at scale technologies, please visit thenewstack.io. Now enjoy the show. NGINX, a part of F5, is the company behind the popular open source project of the same name. NGINX offers a comprehensive suite of technologies to help develop and deliver modern applications, including NGINX Plus for efficient loan balancing, NGINX App Protection for enhanced security, and NGINX Ingress Control for fast, reliable, and secure Kubernetes connectivity. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another On the Road episode of the New Stack Makers. I'm your host, Heather Joslin of the New Stack, and we're here on the floor at KubeCon plus Cloud Native Con North America in Chicago. And uh, we're going to talk today about a development that can change the way outside users access your platform and your network. Um, you're almost certainly using your network's ingress for incoming traffic to your platform. You're probably also wrestling with um, problems like security and scaling and availability. Well, there's a, a new development in the Kubernetes world, the uh, Gateway API, which is an evolution of the Kubernetes ingress, and that is going to hopefully solve some of those problems for you. We're going to learn more about that in this conversation. Uh, we're joined for this conversation by two people from Nginx who can tell us about the Kubernetes Gateway API version 1.0, which has just been released. Um, into general availability and uh, why you should try using it in your environment. First up, Kate Osborne, software engineer at the company. Hi, hi, hi yeah. Kate. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Um, Kate, can you tell us a little bit about um, uh, Nginx and, and the work, what you're, you do there? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think most people probably know us as a web server, um, mm -hmm. but we're actually doing a lot in the Kubernetes space. So we have an ingress controller that's really popular, and then we're also working on and just released the uh, Nginx Gateway Fabric, which is an implementation of the Gateway API. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's what I work on. I've been on that project for about a year and a half and in Kubernetes for about five years, working in that space. We're also joined by Mike Stefaniak, um, who's a senior product manager at Nginx. Hi, Mike. Yep. Hey, how's it going? Mike, can you tell us a little bit about, about your, your role in, at uh, Nginx? Yeah, um, so I'm a senior product manager over the uh, Nginx Gateway Fabric, mm -hmm. which is our Gateway API implementation, um, which is we've decided to actually make uh, separate from our Ingress product. So we still have Nginx Ingress. That's going to go for mm -hmm. a very long time. And we decided to make a standalone product for the Gateway API uh, to help make things a lot more simplified, a lot easier to, to work with, have only one interface. And we want to pick up some um, what are traditionally called east-west use cases as well, which mm -hmm. means applications talking between themselves uh, inside the cluster. So I'm the product manager for that. So yeah, my job is always about uh, what do people want? What do the users want? How do we get it to them as fast as possible? Okay, great. Um, so you'd also like to thank Nginx for sponsoring today's conversation. And let's get going. First of all, what are the issues with uh, the uh, traditional Ingress API for, for incoming network traffic? Yeah, um, so I'll kick it off. So I think one of the biggest issues is it's not extensible. Mm -hmm. So it's a very simple resource, um, but there's like a bunch of complex routing that people want to do. And in order to do that, they've had to add custom annotations. And this has led to like a proliferation of annotations across um, that are specific to like Nginx or specific to Contour mm -hmm. um, that make it hard for the user because it's, it's not a very good user experience. It doesn't have validation because they're just strings. And then it also makes it really hard to migrate from one implementation to the other. I think that's one of the, the biggest problems with it. Mike, do you want to add to that? Yeah, no, I, I would just say it's, it's the stuff that's non-standardized. Um, mm -hmm. There's a lot of stuff that's non-standardized. There's still problems to be solved. And it's like, well, we got to solve them somehow. Everything went in the annotations. And it was it's really hard to uh, get that functionality in there in a way that's standard because it's not standardized. Mm -hmm. uh, the other issue with it is it's not very, um, you've got if you've got a bunch of different application teams, yeah, it's great when we start up. We've got, oh, I got one team. I got one namespace. That's fine. Um, then you have two. Then you have five. Then you have 10 teams. We're all working with the same ingress or inside the same cluster. It's a lot of hands on the same resource, mm -hmm. uh, and that can cause a lot of friction between the teams. And I've definitely been on teams before where they have knocked out other teams because, oh, <laughs> we made an update. Oh, that ended up changing it in such a way that no traffic can get in now. Oh, crap. Oh, it's all hands <laughs> on deck. You got an incident. Um, all that kind of stuff, which has been fun, right? It's There's ways to solve it, obviously, but yeah. what we do with our ingress tool today, 
Uh, but Gateway aims to solve a lot of those problems. I would think a, a lot of hands, a lot of teams jockeying for used to like there could be there could be security issues as well, right? Yes. Yep. Yeah. That's yep. exactly what we're talking about, right? Yeah. Because there's more access to that one single resource. Yeah. So the Kubernetes Gateway API was first proposed at KubeCon four years ago. Um, and now we have version 1.0 in general availability um, with help from more than 150 contributors, open source project. What are some of the issues that it solves? So it's really designed to solve the issues that Mike and I were talking about. Um, so it is extensible. There mm -hmm. are points on multiple gateway API resources where you can reference a policy, mm -hmm. um, which is a CRD. So that you actually get the nice validation there that you don't get from annotations. And different implementations can create their own policies, and you can attach them there to, it, to make it extensible. Um, it's also role-oriented, so what Mike was just talking about. Every resource has an associated role. So mm -hmm. like the cluster operator is in charge of the gateway resource. Mm -hmm. And the app devs are in charge of the route resources. So there's no overlap there. You can really cleanly apply an RBAC policy, which keeps it more secure and allows you to control what you care about without messing up anyone else that mm -hmm. might be sharing the infrastructure. Yeah. yeah, one other thing I'll add too is they're standardizing a lot more of those uh, policies that we found in the annotations. Mm -hmm. yeah. So like, hey, we want timeouts. We want to be able to... Uh, uh, direct traffic somewhere else under a certain circumstance. All that stuff is being standardized in the gateway APIs so that everybody is using a standard template, mm -hmm. um, which is really, I think, got a lot of the collaborators in there in the first place because they're yeah. like, man, that would be great because everybody does it differently. <laughs> We've got to take the time to define it ourselves. Um, so it's been a, it's been a really awesome uh, chance for everybody to come together to define these together so that they don't have to take that burden in each one of the different implementations, which has been interesting mm -hmm. because it's also, you're sitting at the table with all of your competitors, right? We got Kong over here. I was talking to them yesterday. <laughs> They're a competitor to us. And we're like, oh, yeah. cool. Yeah, let's talk about it. Let's <laughs> talk about these problems that we're seeing and, and collaborate on them, yeah. um, which is interesting. And so it's a new way to uh, kind of compete as well. Cause it's like, okay, well, how do we collaborate, but also compete? Like what vectors yeah. can we compete on? Which vectors should we collaborate on? Yeah. Um, just fascinating. That's, That's still evolving. I'd yeah. like to say I have a nice polished answer for that, but I don't think we've, we have one yet. Yeah. Yeah. Well, no, that's good. I mean, it's, it, that's great. I mean, it, it does seem like the spirit of open source, like people yes. from, you know, collaborate for, to create something that everyone can, can use. Um, speaking of use, are there particular use cases for the Kubernetes Gateway API that you, you would want to point out? Um, are there things for which it's particularly well suited? Yeah, I think at this point in time, we mainly expect our, our users to be like greenfield. So you're starting something new. You're mm -hmm. like, hey, we don't want to get in that same problems of ingress because mm -hmm. once you make it, then you're kind of stuck with it for a while because that's yeah. the front door for all of your applications. Mm -hmm. um, so we expect, yeah, people who are, who are just starting up, starting something new or migrating to something, check Gateway out. It might fit your needs. The only case where it might not is that, well, ingress has been around for a very long time. Mm -hmm. Probably will stay along for a very long time because there's yeah. companies that use it today. Uh, has a lot of features, a lot of maturity behind it, a lot of things that it can do. Gateway's still kind of new. Mm. But for, you know, 80% of your use cases, it's it's covered by Gateway. Um, it's when you get into the policies and the special stuff uh, that uh, you probably want to look to ingress for. For now, yeah. <laughs> until they get standardized, yeah. um, which is which is always happening. Just kind of, you know. Yeah. Yeah, and I would add to that one use case that it does really well is like canary releases. It uh -huh. makes it really easy to roll out a new version of your application mm -hmm. as an application developer without bothering other people within your organization. And mm -hmm. that's built right into the resource. So you don't have to, you know, learn like add a new custom resource to do it. It's just traffic splitting built into the HTTP route resource itself. Yeah. So those greenfield, those canary re releases, but not, you're not going to, you're not going to, we don't think you like you not be refactoring something that's you that's yeah, key to your business yet. Yeah, we don't expect that people using Ingress today and yeah. using it heavily are yeah. going to change to Gateway okay. because most likely they're using a policy or something that's not quite implemented in Gateway yet okay. that they need because again they're just more mature. They got all these different app teams. They have all these different use cases they have to account for. Mm -hmm. um, but Gateway will get there. What do you think um, the introduction of, of the Gateway API will mean to the future of Kubernetes? Oh, one of the interesting things, kind of something I was touching on earlier, was when we just went to a Gateway API talk here at, at KubeCon, 
uh, Rob Scott was talking on the on the stage, and he was like, "Yeah, this was like our most collaborative Kubernetes uh, project ever. Uh, it's crazy <laughs> how many different collaborators that we have, how many different implementations that there are. Right? I think there's like 26, um, which is quick because they just came out with 1.0. Yeah. So even before they came out with 1.0, they already had 26 different uh, implementations, and that idea that we're working with. Google and Microsoft and Red Hat and all these different giant tech companies to come together to create something. That's something for me, like, oh, how does that change Kubernetes? Like, that kind of changes how that collaboration works. And I hope hmm. we can do more of that in the future because it's been, it's been a really fun journey. I'll kick it over to Kate for a second before I monopolize all the time. <laughs> so, I, I mean, I think Ingress is going to stay around for a really long time. Mm -hmm. um, but I think Gateway has, like, a unique opportunity to unite the north-south traffic with the east-west. And there's a Gamma initiative within the Gateway group that's working on just that. Mm -hmm. So I think being able to encompass, like, all types of traffic in and out of the cluster, mm -hmm. I mean, I think that'd be really cool to do that with one single, very expressive, um, role-oriented API. I think there's... Lots of possibilities there. How is Nginx looking at implementations of uh, of the Kubernetes Gateway API? So we just released the Nginx Gateway Fabric, um, mm -hmm. which is our implementation of the Gateway API, okay. and we chose to make it completely separate from our Ingress controller offering. Okay. Um, there are a lot of implementers out there that are combining them. Um, mm -hmm. We just wanted to keep them separate. I mean, yeah. So you're yep, implementing yep, it. Right. Yeah. yeah, it's important. Yeah, totally because you're coming yeah. from there. And yeah, that, that's the thing. I've been talking to uh, a lot of our competitors here. Again, that's just kind of the nature of our space. I love that. <laughs> yeah. Like, oh, hey, hey, how you guys doing? Uh, yeah. What you guys doing? What are you thinking about the north, south, east, west problem? Um, and a lot of a lot of our uh, the other implementations out there are kind of bolting it onto their existing product, which is great, right? Happy yeah. for them. Yeah. Um, we see it more as a, as a standalone product, as something like, okay, that's the old. Let's build something around the new, and let's mm -hmm. really go all in on that gateway API and design everything around it. Yeah. Um, not just the north-south, meaning the uh, basically from your users to your applications, but yeah. also between your applications or the east-west. Yeah. Um, between those, and it's really uh, it'd be really interesting to see what the Gamma Initiative comes up with as well. Which we're also keeping an eye on, which is talking about service mesh, which is really about application to application traffic, mm -hmm. um, which totally wasn't a thing for Ingress. We touched on it a little bit. What some of the logical next steps are for the Gateway API, but do you, what do you feel are like the the top priorities for the project going forward? In, in yeah, the, just, the, the, the the like short term roadmap. Yeah, yeah. just what I mean. What, there's there's always API surface. That's probably mm -hmm. going to be the next stuff, right? Just like we we're talking about. Oh, you know the maturity with Ingress about all these different policies and things that they can implement. Mm -hmm. Uh, that that's gonna that's probably gonna come um, and that's gonna come over time and that's something like we as as nginx as an implementer constantly and consistently have to keep up with. Mm -hmm. But some of the more interesting things is again I, I think the the east west use cases the application to application um, traffic is going to be very interesting. Um, so again keeping an eye on, on the gamma initiative yep. um, because as the gateway fabric we don't want to just worry about just bringing things to the cluster it's just another ingress mm -hmm. but also how do we bring the applications together. There's also um, a lot of different route types that are currently experimental in the Gateway API. So right now, only the HTTP route is standard. So I think once like the TLS route, TCP route, gRPC route, those are those graduate up to standard. I mean, I, I think that's the next big thing because then mm -hmm. we can route to a lot of different types of applications that we can't really do right now. Yeah. I think that's where the big use cases come in. We talked yeah. about uh, oh, well, why would people use Gateway? Um, Oh, there's a maturity thing there. That's where a lot of it comes in, is a lot of people have yeah. these different protocols they need to use. Yeah. Uh, and with those routes. Right. Yeah. That, that, I think that's going to bring a lot more people in. Um, one final question. How does someone get involved if they want to get involved in this project? Yeah. So the Gateway API group is, I mean, they're incredible. They're super welcoming. There is a working group every week, a meeting that you can attend if you're interested in contributing to that. Mm -hmm. um, they're always looking for more contributions. And then if you just want to try it out, I mean, I would I would suggest looking at their docs first and then maybe mm -hmm. even trying out the Nginx Gateway Fabric. <laughs> we are also free and open source, so open to contributions as well. We'd love that. Yes, absolutely. And, of course, I would be a good product manager if I didn't say <laughs> check our project out. Um, if you want to get involved with our project, absolutely can. Everything's out in the open. Everything's out on GitHub. Um, yeah, do get involved with the Gateway API stuff. A lot of cool guys there, a lot of cool conversations, a lot of cool problems. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, just be a, be a fan of the space, and it's all out in the open. Okay, great. And and we'll link to uh, to 
that uh, the the ways that people can get involved in, in the article that, that goes with this this uh, podcast. Um, I I think we're about ready to wrap it up. Um, we want to thank Kate Osborne and Mike Stefaniak um, from Nginx for joining us today. Oh, thanks, thanks for having us. Yeah, thanks for having us. It's a pleasure. Um, and we want to thank Nginx for sponsoring us today's conversation. And we'd like to thank all of you for joining us. Uh, this has been Heather Joslin for an On the Road episode of the New Stack Makers. And we'll see you next time. If you like this video, please give us a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more videos like this, you can always subscribe to our YouTube channel. We're on all the major social media platforms. You can always find us at thenewstack.io. We hope to see you soon.